new revelations in a Toronto terror case. Terror on Canada's Parliament Hill. Acts of terrorism. Police are investigating this as an act of terrorism. And what they are treating as terror attacks. Multiple terror charges. The suspect now facing four terrorism charges, including attempted murder and assault. This morning, police say an apparent terror plot has been shut down in southern Ontario. A terror attack in Ottawa. An act of terror. El Shafi El Sheikh. 21 year old Mahad Hersi. Abu Khalid Al Kanadi. Saif Al Kanadi. Ahmed Fouad Mustafa Al Didi. Hader Halab. Abdul Baki Hanif. Abdul Aziz Kawam. Mohammed Khalifa is a Canadian. 32 year old Muslim convert. There was a motive, and it's tied to ISIS. Identified as an ISIS sympathizer. The questions about one suspect's ties to the so called Islamic State. An Islamic State group flag was found inside the vehicle. Now, just two days ago, a suspect known to be consuming ISIS propaganda. For the benefit of, at the direction of, or in association with a terrorist group, the Islamic State. I mean, this is yet another alarm bell going off. There are more questions than answers tonight about a Toronto man accused of plotting a terror attack in the name of the so-called Islamic State. And Ahmed Fouad Mustafa El Didi is facing multiple terror charges in relation to a planned machete and axe attack in Toronto. El Didi was also charged with aggravated assault on behalf of the so-called Islamic State, which the RCMP say took place abroad in 2015. Ahmed El Didi was also arrested along with his son, Mustafa, in a Richmond Hill hotel. Sources say they had just finished taping a so-called martyrdom video in which they appeared with an axe and a machete, as well as an ISIS flag. So Mercedes, what does this seem to say about the immigration system? Well, a lot of questions being raised. We still don't know how or when El Didi came to Canada. So far, only one woman is accused of supporting ISIS. It's illegal to leave Canada to support a terrorist group. Critics are calling it a failure in border security. Leo West traveled to Syria with Global News a few years ago and interviewed Canadian ISIS women following their arrests, including Kimberly Pullman. I'm not above the line. At that time, Pullman said she was prepared to face justice in Canada. She's now living in BC and challenging a peace bond, which limits her travel and internet use, but no criminal punishment. Charges and prosecution of terrorism offenses is actually a strong deterrent for future terrorist activity. He was an IT worker in Toronto before ending up in Syria fighting with ISIS. Could not be provided. Public Safety Minister Bill Blair's office said Sunday it is aware of Khalifa's case, but could not explain why Khalifa will not have to answer for his actions in a Canadian courtroom aimed at convincing extremists to join jihad in Syria. I'm your brother in Islam here in Syria. I originally come from Canada. He is the ultimate pitchman for ISIS, Andre Poulin, a Canadian convert who changed his name to Abu Muslim. I watched hockey. I went to the cottage in the summertime. I love to fish. I wanted to go hunting. I liked outdoors. I liked sports. He moved during the battle like a man who did not know death. The message of the video uh, is that you need to, to, to emigrate from uh, Western countries, especially Canada. Because of its growing problem with radicalization. Too many young Can uh, Canadian Muslims have felt alienated from uh, mainstream uh, society and, and have looked uh, to radical ideologies for a sense of identity and purpose. There is a clamor amongst people uh, from uh, these backgrounds, uh, extremist backgrounds in Canada, uh, extremist ideologies to go and travel uh, to Syria and Iraq and join this Islamic caliphate as they see it. And it's not just fighters ISIS is hoping to recruit. On the video, Pauline's pitch goes well beyond that. We need the engineers, we need doctors, we need professionals, we need, we need, uh, we need volunteers, we need funders, and we need everything. You know, there's a role for everybody. You can even come here and, and help rebuild the, the place. The Canadian government repatriated Ahmed and her children in April from this detention camp in northeastern Syria. If you want to charge me with something, then take me to court. I know I didn't do anything wrong. Ahmed's husband was El Shafi El Sheikh. I don't believe in democracy. U.S. prosecutors say he's the highest ranking ISIS member they've tried. In an exclusive interview this week with this BBC journalist and CBC, Ahmed called traveling to Syria in 2014 a stupid decision and denied any knowledge of her husband's crimes.
I can be charged tomorrow, I can be charged next week, next year. You know what I mean? Everything is still ongoing. And it's not something that, obviously Canada's priority and most countries' priority is public safety. You know, if I, if I was a threat or they found me an uh, imminent threat, I, will, I won't be out. You know, I'll be, I'll, be in, I'll be in jail, sitting in jail. So Ashley, what's the risk concern here? Well, Ahmed told CBC and BBC that her marriage ended in 2017, but prosecutors believe that the relationship continued and that during her eight years in Syria, she was steeped in ISIS ideology. Just a week ago, a Canadian claiming to be with ISIS, Abu Khalid al Kanadi, the Canadian, posted this message on Twitter. Yes, my message is clear. Canada initiated attacks on the Islamic State, that is, taking part in the U.S.-led coalition against ISIS. So Muslims in Canada retaliate and kill them wherever you find them. How he became a Canadian citizen. He was planning a suicide bomb attack from his home in Strathroy, Ontario. How he was able to immigrate to Canada. Nithu, the federal government is refusing to explain how a Toronto man was able to immigrate to Canada despite allegedly having taken part in ISIS violence overseas in Iraq before he moved to Canada. And that they have reasonable grounds to believe she could commit terrorism related offenses here in Canada, including indoctrinating and recruiting recruiting others to join ISIS. The Canadian government has identified 30 Canadians now fighting in Syria and Iraq, another 100 fighting in places like Yemen, Pakistan and Afghanistan. The you might think this is a commercial from the Tourism Board of Canada. It's not. It's actually a recruiting video from ISIS. The federal government is citing privacy in court proceedings, refusing to release that information. This case is deeply concerning and not the first time security screening in immigration has failed. This is yet another alarm bell going off with the woeful lacking border security we have in our country. There's a lot of people who could have lost their lives because of politicking, and that should really alarm Canadians. It is very frightening that someone like that has been welcomed back and repatriated into the country. The government claims to know the identification of all of those fighters. Already 80 of them have returned home and could pose a potential terrorist threat. The Conservative opposition is calling for the government to disclose what happened in this case. How did this person get citizenship? We need to know how somebody came into the country after being depicted on camera, allegedly doing unspeakable acts. So lots of questions for the government here in Ottawa about our security. And how is this person not on National Security Sources' radar before the beginning of July, Nithu, which is when the RCMP said they first became aware of the concern. So the fact that Canada isn't doing that in this space, I think sends the wrong kind of message. Why is ISIS targeting Canada? Canada's credibility as a partner in the global fight against terrorism is taking a hit. Canadians are shocked by Justin Trudeau's decision to give a $10.5 million secret payout to the terrorist who killed U.S. Army Sergeant Christopher Spear in Afghanistan. Make no mistake, this settlement is a choice made by Justin Trudeau.